In a battle-scarred landscape south of Bakhmut, a small, specialized Ukrainian unit is preparing to cross deep behind Russian lines. They ready their munitions, crawl into the trenches, and prepare to attack. But they'll go no further. They don't have to. This is a Ukrainian drone unit. Using small consumer models, they're targeting Russian bunkers far across the battlefield. The drone moves into position and releases its payload, a direct hit. In the largest conflict in Europe in nearly 80 years, the future of warfare is small, inexpensive, and available to anyone. It's a stark contrast to the large scale and even larger price tag drones commonly used by the U.S. military and CIA. A lot of drone warfare is about economics. The bomb, the drone, costs maybe a couple thousand dollars, but if they're lucky, they can take out a Russian tank worth a few million. Alexei, call sign Solo Ma, is a platoon commander and drone pilot. We are spotting the enemy positions to adjust artillery fire during the shooting mortars. That's amazing. So artillery is an old technology, but you're using these modern drones to make it more precise, more accurate. Absolutely. We're in high-tech war time. The Ukrainians have become experts in handmade modifications, allowing hobby consumer drones to expand their carrying capacity and release bombs. When you're flying above the enemy positions, you just press the button, it opens. The precision of their strikes, guided by nothing more than a steady hand on the joystick and lots of practice, is remarkable. Here, a Ukrainian drone operator releases a grenade straight through the narrow hatch of a Russian tank. Another follows a moving transport truck and flies right inside before detonating. Technology may evolve the means of war, but never the human experience of enduring it. When you're looking at the video of your drone and you see that your unit has landed a direct hit on the Russians and you know people have been killed on yeah. the ground, yeah. how does it feel? I don't like it. I don't want to be in the military. I don't want to be uh, at the war. I don't want war in Ukraine. I just want uh, to live my life. So uh, when I hit the target or artillery hit the target and we see it, uh, it's just uh, a process for liberation of our country. Since the day of the invasion, that fight for liberation has been a national endeavor, and they're crowdsourcing it. So this is more than ten thousand dollars. Yeah, this drone. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. And volunteers raise the funds. Yes. And it's going to the front line. Yeah. Out of a warehouse in Kiev, the Serhiy Petula Foundation says they've delivered nearly eight thousand drones to the military, purchased with donor money. That's still just a drop in the bucket. British think tank RUSI reports that Ukraine is losing ten thousand drones per month. But for the troops on the ground, every single one makes a difference. How does it feel for you knowing that you're helping your country doing stuff like this? Uh, that, uh, uh, I'm useful. I do something, maybe not much, uh, but uh, I do something to help our country to destroy the Russian army, uh, to save lives in Ukraine. Russia is utilizing drones as well, but their focus has been on large military attack models like the Iranian-made Shahed. They have had devastating effects on cities across Ukraine used in tandem with traditional missile strikes like the one we witnessed in Kharkiv earlier this year. Just heard two major explosions here in Kharkiv. We can see that there's smoke rising from a building just a couple of hundred meters away from us. We don't know what was hit but we're right in the center of the city here. This is largely a civilian area. A typical Russian attack sends dozens of drones at a city center in the chance that some might make it through air defenses. Ukrainians are now all too familiar with their distinct sound like a lawnmower. Drones have also taken the war deep inside Russia, though Ukraine is wary of taking credit for strikes from border cities all the way to Moscow. The most high-profile attack targeting the Kremlin itself, an object seen flying towards the Senate building before it hits a flagpole and explodes. Russia says no one was injured and President Putin was not in the Kremlin at the time. In this new, modern war, no position is safe. In an indication of just how much fear the small consumer drones inspire on the ground, their very presence was enough for one Russian soldier to throw down his arms and surrender. The Ukrainians write a note, surrender and follow the drone, and drop it to him. 
Though European trenches little changed in hundreds of years, he follows an unmanned robot and trusts in one small gesture of humanity. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.